Finance Committee to order? <laughs> Any other committees that need to be called to order? Are you guys already? Bring it up. <laughs> School committee, do you guys need to call to order or no? Okay, still in session? Great, all right, let's call the finance, the financial forum to order. Um, every, before we start, everyone, could you please make sure that you get one of each handout that is at the door? Uh, one has the agenda on it, and it's approximately 26 pages long, and the other um, is more of kind of a, a spreadsheet that's dated 2010. That is not a misprint. Ah, sorry, and one other thing, there's a sign-in sheet over there, right by the, the papers you're picking up. Could people please sign in? Oh, where, oh, sorry, right here, Gene has it. If everybody could please make sure you sign in, that would be really appreciated. Yes, that's, it's for the forum, yes, this one? Yeah. All right, folks. All right, has everybody got materials? Great. So thanks, everybody, for coming. Very much appreciated, and, and I'm glad that you had a very productive um, prior meeting also. Um, I didn't get to attend much of that last meeting, but the part I did get to attend was great because one of the first comments, I think um, Gene may have made the comment. No, you're safe. Um, one of the great things about the town of Reading is that the groups, um, all the, the town boards and things, um, work together very well and spend time working together. And one of the reasons why the idea for the financial forum was brought together several years ago was to do exactly that, is to have a chance for all of the groups in town to get together, to talk about priorities, to talk about what we're facing all together as a community, and figure out where we're going to take it from there. And really, that's the kind of the, the opening message of why we do these, why we start them so early. I'm sorry that it's the middle of the summer, but um, we want to get started on it. So what I'd ask you to do is if you can go turn to page four for a moment. Actually, use that agenda. That's all right. Here's what we're going to do kind of uh, quickly. One is to talk about um, kind of why we're here and talk about a schedule. We've put together ideas for four different financial forums, basically leading from discussions all the way up to the point where uh, budget guidelines are established, and then when the budgets actually are, are being uh, worked on very hard for the next fiscal year. So the way they're set up now, we're here tonight, July 30th. September 10th is the, uh, the date for the next forum. And um, one of the things that we had talked about and Bob was able to, to really deliver on was to ask all of our state legislators if they would attend that meeting, and they've agreed. So they will all be in attendance at that meeting, which is, which is wonderful. Um, then in October, I think at that point, probably we'll be starting uh, uh, guidance on uh, planning for next year. And then uh, January 29th, if needed, we're, we're getting into a lot more depth of budgets and what's actually going on. Um, now, Bob and I, kind of, we kind of have a little patchwork here. We're going to work on back and forth just to make sure. So I think I'm still OK, right, for timing? OK. So let me send you on to page six, if I could. And next time we'll, we'll uh, we got a little technologically challenged at the last minute on this, but we'll, we'll be all right. <laughs> um, just kind of on, on the theme, you know, we're a community, a lot of the people in this room spend a lot of time working on town activities and working to support the town and what we're doing. It's greatly appreciated. It's a chance for us to kind of talk about our priorities and talk about how to make them happen, you know, navigating what the best course is going to be. It's a great tradition of the town. It's something we want to have um, very much continue. Um, Personal comment, I think that as we came to the last town meeting, um, a little bit of that spirit it wasn't quite as strong as, as I think it used to be. And one of the hopes that I think I have here, and, and we've talked as a, as a financial uh, income, is that we can kind of get, get the spirit back. I think something kind of spun out a little bit, and we'll figure out how to get it back on track. So that's one of the reasons why we're here. If you go to page seven, one of my favorite quotes from the American Revolution from Ben Franklin. We must indeed all hang together, but most assuredly, we shall all hang separately. So, page eight, fiscal thinking. We have a lot of stuff going on in this town. 
Um, there are a lot of projects. There are a lot of things that have just come to fruition. There's more stuff that's in process. We have a lot of projects that are going to be coming. Um, it's a very busy time for us, and that means there are a lot of different priorities. And at the same time, I'm going to take you to page nine for a moment. This is just a kind of, I went to just look and see if I could find some information comparing things between kind of 1990, 2000, 2010, to see what, what's been changing uh, in terms of the town of Reading and different things. So I found in my inbox today on the top right, the hottest housing markets in Massachusetts, Q2 2014. And although Melrose was on top, Reading was looking pretty good too. Um, you know, a lot going on, 15th in the state out of 351. Um, there's a lot of activity. Um, the one-year value change in medium home value, it's up 13%. Um, it's, there's a lot of stuff going on. On the bottom right, I was able to kind of do a little comparison to see, you know, where does Reading sit kind of in the mix uh, for incomes, um, population, things like that. And, and this isn't the entire list of the communities. I kind of selected some folks that we, we look at occasionally uh, for comparison. Um, you know, some uh, certainly of, of, of higher means, some of lower means, just to kind of see where we are. Um, it was interesting. We, we kind of are sitting in, in, uh, in a good spot. Um, on the far left is from Zillow, talking about Reading home prices and values and um, kind of discussing Reading as a really popular town. Um, we've been doing a lot of things right, guys. Um, it's really admirable and really wonderful. Uh, the bottom left is kind of talking about population. Just trying to see you know, what was going on. So has our population changed much since 2000? It's up 4.4%. Um, median income um, it went from 77,000 in the year 2000 to 103,000 uh, in 2012, latest data. Um, and how does that, you know, where does that put us compared to the state? On average, Massachusetts is about 65,000. So, you know, not quite twice that number. Uh, page 10. Um, just a little bit of information also, again, looking at you know, average house price income and salaries and if the top one is the dollars the bottom one is an index so if you look at the average house price in 1990 what was you know one or whatever the value was up 26 percent between 1990 and 2000 now, obviously it was not a straight line to that point but 2000 to 2010 um, you know up good 60 percent you know very dramatic increases um, family income didn't didn't quite match that although it, it didn't do so badly 1.88 Um, did I lose Bob? Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Peripheral vision. I think it tag for a moment, yes? Yeah, um, that last column, just as information, this was done a couple of years ago for a different purpose um, at the request of uh, then uh, FinCom wannabe Mr. Arena. <laughs> um, and he, he, he said, just out of curiosity, um, how's the pay in town and schools? And so our treasurer back then ran every 10 years, ran an average salary based on FTEs that we carried. I don't mean to read anything terribly deeply into this, but it's just more data for you to see. Um, it doesn't speak to how many people work for the town or the schools, but it just speaks to their level of income. And you know, his question and, and the data proved out that their level of income has not kept up with other things in town. Um, to move on ahead, I want to take another little bit of a glance back. If you go to that smaller handout that looks like a spreadsheet, I just want to spend a minute or two. Um, many in the room are familiar with what this is, but for those that aren't, I think it's important to preface tonight by saying that uh, almost four years ago, the Finance Committee sat down in a similar situation at two different meetings. And the first uh, thing they asked was uh, what other revenues could we bring into town and people just suggested all kinds of wacky ideas we listed them on a page we spread them all out around the room and people voted so what you see uh, is the wacky list on the left and then the votes they got uh, right next to that in a column and um, you know I won't dwell on the details but you will see that many of these things were put into place uh, and then some were discarded as impractical or some were discarded by the town as not something the town was interested in. And then on the next several pages was uh, where can we cut costs? Revenues are a lot more challenging. We have a very limited menu, but there was a much bigger appetite on suggestions on how to cut costs. And the first small block was a way to cut some one-time costs. And then the bulk of them were things that we could do uh, to cut 
costs on an ongoing operating basis. And again, I'm not going to go through them in any detail, but you can see it was quite a robust discussion. And over the last uh, four years, particularly four and three years ago when we were having a real difficult time, uh, we implemented many of these changes. Um, so it was really good feedback, I thought, from the community. And I thought, again, particularly for those of you that didn't sit through that and weren't aware of it, um, we weren't sure at the time uh, how it would work out. And, and I would have to say, looking back four years later, it worked out better than anyone could have hoped in terms of soliciting ideas from the community at large uh, and then putting them into play and, and having real benefit. And I know the Finance Committee uh, has you know, discussed over the last few months what to do next. And as Mark said, when the legislatures are in here, we'll um, impress upon them the fact we've raised as many revenues and cut as many costs as we can, and it's time to get more state aid, and we'll see how that does. <laughs> Certainly um, that's part of the discussion. <laughs> <laughs> and, and tonight's packet, I want to look forward. If you'll start on page 11, we'll just spend a couple minutes on something that, again, some of you, uh, that, you know, were in some forums in this room will know. There's something called EDSAT. It was an economic development self-assessment tool. And thanks to Jackie Carson, who's sitting back there somewhere, for hosting us at the, f the finale. Um, to make a long story short, we hired uh, Professor Barry Bluestone from Northeastern from the D Dukakis Center. He looked very objectively at Reading. Lots of questions. Staff filled out many of them. Lots of different staff members, school and town, filled out many of them. And then he put it into his magic machine and cranked it around for a few weeks and came up with some answers. And the actual report itself is, is 100 or more pages, and there was no need for that. But I thought it'd be interesting for you, those in your room that weren't familiar with this, just at his conclusions. And he lists um, a summary of strengths and weaknesses. And again, these aren't a topic for tonight, but this is one of the tools that's helping guard the Board of Selectmen and staff forward in the area of economic development. And one thing, and one theme to kind of think of tonight, and one thing that I think we all had our eyes open to, was sometimes you do something really well. Uh, Professor Bluestone, again with his uh, magical regressions and knowledge, sometimes told us you do it really well, and you know what, it doesn't make any difference at all. <laughs> and you've been spending a lot of time and effort on something that really doesn't gonna change things. So that's something we all really need to keep, keep uh, in the back of our minds that we have to always ask ourselves the question, not first, are we doing it well, but does it matter? How much does it matter? We need to n make sure we understand how to prioritize. What's our objective? In this case, economic development was the mission. And, this, and some of the factors that, you know, some of the very well-intentioned uh, staff and volunteers over the years thought would be important just aren't that important. And so it's really good to get an outside neutral view of that. And we need to remind ourselves of that. We only have finite energy as a town to spend on certain you know, activities. We gotta channel that energy very uh, carefully. And just to get to the uh, page 13, just to highlight again a couple issues for the room. You know, we certainly took some of the lessons of weaknesses away and some of them that we can't do much about. <clears throat> um, we're landlocked, we don't have a lot of land to develop. Our rents are very high, our housing prices are very high. We're not gonna change that. Nothing in this room we do unless we ruin the education system is going to change that. Um, but there are things we can uh, influence. And I've made some notes on the side for those things that we've already changed or will work on. And I, I think, I'll speak for myself, the biggest lesson I came away with is uh, the town does a poor job of marketing itself. That's not only to other businesses, but to its own residents. Some parts of the town do a better job than others, but I'll speak for the town government side. I don't think we spend a lot of time and effort at it, and the results show. Uh, we have a web page that's kind of been thrown together. A year or so ago, it was a little more up to date than it is now, but we don't spend a lot of time telling people about the good things we do because we're too busy doing things. And what this report showed us, you need to stop doing so many things and start telling people what you're doing. So that eventually, for instance, if you're ever going to go to voters for more money and they haven't had a history of understanding all the things you're doing well, why should they start listening all of a sudden when you want money? So that's something I know the board and I are committed to doing a better job is figuring out a better way to communicate with people. And we don't want to turn into a PR firm, but we need to do a far better job explaining to everyone what we do well and not so well, just to be fair. Mark? 
If I can get you to page 14, please. Just kind of a, a suggested process, if you will, in terms of what we might do and, and work on together. One of the things that uh, PINCOM came to uh, an understanding of, I guess, is that you know, look, the community needs to set priorities on the services that they want, decide which ones it will afford, and which ones and how it's going to fund them, basically. And why? Because accommodated costs in our budget, things like health care, are going to be are continuing, as best we know, and very likely to grow faster than Prop 2.5 allows, which means the operating budget is going to go and get under a lot more pressure than it has been ever before. Even if we simply want to maintain services, we will need new sources of revenue to do that. It's just, it's the way it is. Um, our reserve position today, um, although it's not finalized by any means, <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my knuckles are a little sore. Um, you know, uh, I think Bob put in a slide as of last June. Well, we, this, this past June. Yeah, past June. So June. Uh, not we, we, official. Right, not official. <laughs> it, it, you know, it might be between seven and eight percent. It might be a little bit different, but you know, it's not likely to be four, and it's not likely to be twelve. Um, it's somewhere in that range. FinCom has had for many years a policy that relates to this at 5%. I'm going to talk about kind of policies in a minute. Um, but, you know, today we're a little bit ahead of it, um, but maintaining services is cutting into it. Um, if you look back a couple of years, um, we really had, it looked like we really had a tremendous amount of free cash. That's certainly not the situation today. We have a lot of capital projects um, that are an active part of the town. Certainly the library, there's infrastructure improvements, there'll be school facilities, there'll be others that'll be coming as well. There's a lot of stuff that's on the docket. So if you go to page 15, FinCom it's itself is gonna, doesn't have a lot of policies, but those that we do, we wanna take a look at. So reserves, you know, one of the things we, we do is we look at free cash, and that's kind of our estimate. But over the last several years, we've created some accounts um, that are actually are reserve related, but not part of free cash. So we want to kind of take a look at that in total to see how much money you know, really is there to understand exactly where we are. And then the FinCom wants to talk about um, is the number that we have set correct? Is it too high? Is it too low? Is it just right? And why? So that will be a part of our, our uh, upcoming discussions in a big way. Um, capital spending. We've had a 5% plan in place for how many years, Bob, now? About 10. About 10 years. And you can see the results of it. Uh, beautiful, a lot of new buildings, a lot of other activity. Um, is that level required going forward or not, and why? So it may be that that's something we can look at also. Um, OPEB, um, these wonderful liabilities that are sitting out there. We don't yet have a, a specific policy related to that and how we're going to fund it. That said, uh, the last several years, we've actually put away substantial amounts of money toward it. Not substantial toward the XDX millions yet, but substantial in terms of taking that money out of our budget. Um, We'll talk about whether or not there needs to be a policy on that in, in coming meetings. And then Bob brought up a very, what I thought was a very interesting idea um, that we wanted to share. I guess I'll share your idea if that's okay. <laughs> but to think about the time horizon for budget planning as two years rather than one. And obviously we can't go through in, in infinite detail, but to look out kind of more at the long term. This past year we ran into a situation where there were some, um, what some on the Finance Committee considered were very high priorities that didn't get funded because there was a, a feeling that it might be fundable for one year, but not, for, uh, not beyond that. So they were taken off the table. Um, and maybe that wasn't the right uh, answer that, that came forward. And I think we want to talk about that. And maybe if we start thinking about things a little bit more broadly, um, we're getting a reasonable handle on what's going on, unfortunately, with state aid, other than what we're going to tell our, our legislators. Um, we can get a pretty good idea of what will get regenerated in terms of, of funds each year, which is unfortunately probably less than the one-time fines we've had. But maybe thinking about things a little bit longer than one year um, could be very helpful. Um, one of the other things that, that could come from this is maybe what we think about is setting some town priorities. And by town priorities, I mean they're kind of over the, at the highest level. In other words, higher than X percent here and, and X percent there. It says, before we do X percent, there are some priorities we need to take care of in general. Um, you know, I, I, there could be some specific examples of that, but I think it's something we want to think about and then come back and say, okay, now the budget guidelines after those priorities are dealt with is, is this number. Again, it's not formed yet. I think it's just want to kind of throw out this idea of thinking more broadly about what we're working on and, and what we can do with it. 
Um, Reading 2020, I think, Bob, you've got a slide on that. You're going to talk it to it in a minute. Let me just kind of finish what's going on here. There are a lot of other groups in town, formerly the boards that are here, but um, uh, different town departments, different people, different groups that are all involved. So clearly there's Reading 2020, which Bob will talk about. That, that's an effort that's ongoing, the selectmen and the town. Um, the Early Childhood, Childhood Center Group, um, the Permanent Building Committee, um, which uh, hopefully may be seeing more light fairly soon, um, economic development, uh, activities and meetings, space utilization planning. There still is some open space in town, and, and obviously Gene's very involved in what's going on with that, and, and many, many more. The point of this slide is I think it's a good time for us to all review kind of what we're working on, where the priorities are, are we spending properly, um, in, in kind of, I guess, our opinion, the town's opinion, um, and then use that as, as a basis for where we head. So let's go to, Bob, is this one for me or for you? I'll do 16. Okay. Um, the town accountant isn't allowed to say anything about the future, but the town manager doesn't have that restriction. <laughs> <laughs> but she could punch me. <laughs> um, if you look strictly speaking at June 30th, one year ago, 2013, and all the official acts of town meeting, um, and that's all, well, then we're at 8.2% uh, free cash, which is above FinCom's guidance. We know that won't be where it comes in because our revenues were actually a little bit higher than we projected. Sharon doesn't know how much yet. And it's very likely that our expenses were lower than we expected. They certainly can't be higher or we'd be in a lot of trouble. So I think it's comfortable to say that 8% is probably the floor on this number and I don't really have a, an idea on the, on the ceiling. And it's, it's the annual discussion about how much money can be used in the budget process that you would consider as a neutral number because it will be regenerated. And, you know, the finance people, and, and I'll include myself in that group, tend to be on the conservative side. Um, we've sort of mentally increased that from half a million to three quarters of a million, possibly a million, <laughs> over the last few years. Um, I think at when this year's closed, I, I wouldn't see any change in that. Um, so that the fact that a million seven was used last year may or may not turn out to be neutral with whatever we regenerated, but at least I'll speak for myself, it's too high to be sustainable. A million seven does not appear to me to be sustainable. Um, and that's, that's all we really need to sort of discuss with cash. But as, as the hope is, and, and I'll get to soon, that we'll have numbers uh, by late September, a little bit earlier than some years, because we'll need them. I wanted to spend just a moment on, on something called Reading 2020 and invite the Finance Committee and the School Committee, and if there's any, I don't think there's any other board here formally, um, to participate. I'll, I'll draw your attention, 17 is a bit of an overview, but if you turn to page 18, there's four specific working groups that have been formed. Uh, community Partners is meant to identify groups in town, organizations in town, businesses in town, who do things that the town also does, um, and identify who they are and what services they provide, for instance. That's an external look. The internal look is another group looking at what the town does. Let's identify the specific services we offer. And there's many people who are aware of them, but there's very few of us who are aware of all of them. That's the real challenge. And to come up to, to some kind of a method, if it's possible, to measure how well we do it. Um, some of that is quantifiable fairly simply. How many building permits did you issue? Uh, some of it's very difficult in terms of how well did you do the activity. So there's a group uh, working on that. With the idea that with those first two pieces of information, we can start thinking of ways of being more creative and at least understand our options for, is that something town government, for instance, has to do? Is there someone else in town that would do it just as well or better? Or is there someone else who could help us and partner in, in that activity? And in order to have that discussion, we need part three, which is communication, which I think is, is a huge issue in this town. Um, I have not found any single way or even a couple of ways that you can communicate with the entire town. It's just not possible. Uh, my predecessor used to say a brick with a note around it through the plate glass window was the most effective way. I don't think he ever tried that, though. Um, the challenge for all of us is to identify different ways of communicating with different groups and I think this is the area that's going to be most challenging because those ways are going to change all the time. Um, Peter and I used to have an interesting 
battle about Facebook. He wanted to use it. He wanted to have a blog, and I said, no, that's the last thing we want. Um, you're going to start getting a lot of anonymous feedback, and you're not going to like it. Um, I got an email about a week or so ago from a consultant, very well-respected consultant, graceful ways for municipalities to exit their use of Facebook <laughs> <laughs> for this exact reason. Um, social media is a powerful tool. Anonymity is a devastatingly negative tool. Um, and you know we've seen smaller examples of that in the early days of Patch here. Um, communication is really important. You have to really think about what are you trying to accomplish. You know, not just con communication, but how you want to control it. And I think the area where I, I'd invite some partnership in the room is just a broad issue of strategic planning. And, and the selectmen and I will identify for the next uh, board meeting in August a list of big issues that face the community and attempt to prioritize them. The, the list is very long. I think the prioritization and the talking through is the important part. We, we can all come up with a list. Um, as we discussed last night, there's probably only a half dozen or so themes, very general themes. Uh, one of them, for instance, could be revenue raising. This could be a hundred different ways to do it, but ultimately that's one of the main objectives of the activity is to raise money. So I, I think that's probably an activity I, I'd offer up to the Finance Committee and to the School Committee to, to join in on, and we'll have a further discussion on that. But I thought it was important that this group knows these activities are underway. Um, the next section, I, I'll say, is mostly for the benefit of the Finance Committee, but there's no harm in everyone knowing. Um, we are going to have a special town meeting on September 29th. Um, there's a draft list of agenda item along with details that will eventually come forward but won't appear in a, in a summary like this normally. Um, some of it's financial. Um, the last two articles, some of the financial things are, are important, but the last two articles are probably the most important. Um, we're going to do medical marijuana zoning bylaw change to separate that from the November town meeting with the full zoning rewrite. We want to just put some distance between those two and, and give some people a possibility of having Thanksgiving dinner. And then, as many of you have probably been aware, there's a recent issue on Summer Ave that may require town meeting action. I have no idea what that could be. That could be a 10-minute thing, that could be nothing, or it could be a five-day adventure. I, I really don't know. But we're going to hold a placeholder for them. I just wanted everyone in the room to understand that uh, there is going to be a town meeting. Mark? Okay, to page 22, please. So, Bob had outlined in, in your, your second handout, which is kind of the 2010 activities, we did take a look at ideas for revenue. We looked at ideas for cost cutting. Um, I think that those are, are great things and we should do it again. And I think that for the September meeting, that would be a great topic for us to work on, especially because our legislator is going to be here. Um, and. You know, what, what I would love to do is kind of have that as a working session, brainstorming session, with them participating, and then at the end of the meeting to let them make some comments as well. Um, I think that that can be really productive for them to hear what we're, what we're facing, how we're trying to approach it, and the help, frankly, that we need from them. So for tonight, what I'd like to do is focus on um, really service priorities. And, and again, not trying to short circuit a process of what are the town's priorities. But to get a sense from the people in this group who are very involved in lots of town activities, what, you know, what fits on, on different kinds of lists? It's brainstorming, no judgments. Um, the goal is to generate a list, not to debate the merits of what gets discussed here. If you go to page 23, we've tried to organize them. Um, I think it started as three, it went to four, and I think I'm up to five, I apologize. But we tried to kind of set up categories of services. So category one, services that the town provides today and we feel the needs are being met, the, the uh, taxpayers' needs are being met. Category two is the services are provided today, but the needs aren't being met, so it's not sufficient. Category three, services that are not provided today, but should be. Category four is services provided today, but they're overfunded. And that's, again, as, as people are, are uh, feeling that's the case. Or category five, which is really kind of related to four, the service is provided today and it shouldn't be funded at all. It really shouldn't be on the priority map. Um, I, I think uh, back in 2010, we tried to do this adventure also, and we, uh, we went through and we were able to create a list of, of the needs and things that people, ev what everybody wanted, and then we said, okay, everybody needs to cross a couple of things off the list. What are the things you can live without? And the room went silent. 
and we struggled and, and couldn't, really, couldn't really progress. So what I was trying to do is kind of create a few more categories to try and see if we can start to, to kind of pull areas where people you know, would like to have a little discussion. My purpose here, or our purpose here tonight, is to kind of start with this brainstorming. And a very important activity that needs to come from this, though, is exactly what Bob said on communication. How do we get the word out? How do we get more people involved? Certainly, it should be town meeting members. It should be you know, other people. And, and I actually am going to suggest as a homework assignment for the next meeting that each of us work really hard to find at least one neighbor to bring along to the meeting and have more faces in the room. And I think that might just be a concrete step to get more people involved in what's happening. So here's my suggestion on what we try to do here. We've got some pads here. Bob has volunteered to scribe on one side, and maybe we'll, we'll either I or someone else can volunteer to scribe on this side. But take these categories one at a time, and then just start the brainstorming. And we'll kind of uh, write down all the different ideas that come up that fit into the, into the category. Um, after we go through each of the lists, we've got some colored dots over here. And what we'd like to try to do is then say, OK, if you had three votes on each of the lists, basically, if you had three votes, actually put them right up there. Just put the sticker right next to it. Again, it's meant as a count, just to kind of assess the feeling of the room, um, and just kind of see, see what we get coming from that. Yes? Sure. But if someone else feels that it really belongs in a different category, are you going to allow those to be placed in both categories? Yes. OK, great. Yeah, again, this is, we're, we're kind of generating the list. And it may turn out that based on votes, we, we learned something that we didn't expect. <laughs> so why don't we start with category one, services provided today where the needs are, are being met. Um, feel free just to kind of offer the idea. Bob, do you want to be the first scribe on these? Yeah. Great. Services provided today needs being met. Uh, trash and recycling program. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Thank you. I feel pretty good about that. Uh, if I get out there before seven, then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was the one thing that everybody voted to get rid of when, when they had to give I out know. something. I just know. so you know. <laughs> well, we'll see what happens well, now with that, right? Likes it. <laughs> Jeff, is she right? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you give it up under the tax law. Yeah. Yeah. Have to give it up. Okay. Aside from trash, what's next? <laughs> I should say strictly as a consumer, without opening my eyes and watching on the spend side or the unmet needs, that in general fire and police, are, from my con consumer perspective, are adequate. You know, we get when the phone when there's a need and the phone rings, somebody shows up. Uh, wait times are very short and. Uh, it's adequately staffed and equipped. I'd like to add um, town hall to that as well. When I was just in the neighboring community and my eyes were open. Because, um, yeah, you call here, you get the right person on the phone quickly, and offices, except for Fridays, prefer it. Yeah. <laughs> Library? Youth activities, I don't know, sports, I know younger kids, there certainly seems to be a lot offered right now. So is there any, any part of town, any part of services today that we haven't mentioned so far? I'll, I'll add one. I think our infrastructure is in really good shape. 
I think generally our capital is well maintained, both equipment and facilities. Category two, services provided today needs not being met. And maybe what we should do is, um, again, no judgments, but if there's a particular aspect that is of concern, to highlight that. So instead of just kind of listing you know, a department, you know, DPW needs aren't being met. Sorry, Jeff. Um, what about it? What, what's the issue? John. I've got to warp this question a bit to answer it. I might describe it as services provided today, but. It's either a deficit on the need side or an opportunity on the need side, depending on how you view it. Uh, I, I point to this that we have an extraordinary youth athletics program at all levels, be it from you know, challenger level all the way up through the varsity level. And having been a prior coach at many of those levels, the pressure for sports services is, is uh, beyond its capacity. There is an unmet need whereby a greater number of services, services were available. I think, frankly, we could not only meet that extra need, but monetize that value. There's a real opportunity. Last night at the Board of Selectmen's meeting, we heard from um, the, flag the group putting on flag football. And in three years span, their enrollment's gone from 200 kids to, to 485. And this year, it's over 500, and they've had to turn kids away. They have a waiting list. I mean, the math was stunning. It's like 30 percent percent of the elementary school is playing flag football, and I don't think that counts teachers, right? No. <laughs> uh, and so there's a, there's an unmet need there that provides a benefit, but I think there's also people expect that that's going to have a cost associated with the benefit, and that goes back to the revenue question that we'll ask ourselves later on. So we have a, an innate demand that if we could find a way to scratch that itch. Space, it's surfaces, yeah. it's the infrastructure to make the surfaces work, in some cases it's Don't lights, in some cases it's the infrastructure to make all that play for the right number of hours. And the revenue opportunities there are, if by looking at other communities, are, I won't say boundless, but they're substantial. It's gymnasiums too, isn't it? It's yeah. indoor and outdoor. It's indoor turf fields, yes. it's, it's, it's four season fields, <laughs> it's... And we know we have we know we have the product, and we know we have the customers. We need more product. We need more services, right? Well, we need the delivery system. And we need the delivery system. I mean, we've got a recreation department that we. I don't know if it was the recreation get on yeah. this list. I uh, hope the youth activities, but it really yeah. 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 I think I should have got onto this list. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Paul brought up the youth um, yeah. You know, so we've got a, We actually have a delivery system, but we don't have enough. Yeah. We don't have enough product. I mean, we've got market, and we've and we've got delivery, and we have revenue opportunity, and we're not delivering product uh, at the levels of that could. Free yeah. of the process. I hear you loud and clear. And you know that also has an impact when we think about keeping our young people as busy as possible in mm. healthy, organized activities. It, it has a huge impact as that flows back into you know our our constant partnership you know, on behalf of our children through our cost. Uh, so uh, I think that that may be a separate but related point that we can add to that unmet needs list is um, kind of things for youth to do. Safe things. Safe fun things. And I, I do think, for example, in the services being provided, but all the possible needs not being met, 
I think it's important to preface that when, and I think John, you were going to this point, when you put something on this list, that's not a, that's not taking a shot at what's, what's going on. What that's saying is, okay, we have this service, um, and it's delivering, you know, what it's, what it's capable of delivering, but maybe its potential is so much more. And I, and I think of our CASA in that regard. I mean, that coalition partnership has made huge strides, yet has so much more opportunity um, if it's properly supported. Um, full disclosure, I'm married to Mark Dodson. I was supposed to say that. <laughs> and he just said for me when I was about safe, um, safe, fun things to do, but I'd like to stretch that a little more and say spaces for kids to go to. John, you mentioned um, organized activities, but there's also a need for places for kids to go that aren't organized, where kids can safely hang out where there would be supervision. I'm not saying that the town has to provide it, I'm saying there's a need, and I don't know how that need is gonna be met. But a lot of the kids, especially during the year, are very programmed. They have lots of organized places, and they need places to go just to be yeah. with one another, and grow, and make their own fun in safe ways. Jean. Thank you. Um, <coughs> is preschool certainly falls under the category of the service we provide. We're not meeting the needs. I think the last time meeting, there were about 20 parents who had their children on the wait list. Mm -hmm. A couple months ago, I was at a barbecue, um, met a neighbor, a friend in the neighbor who lives near in town, who didn't know who I was, that I'm on the school committee, and was telling me how much she's having a hard time finding a placement for her incoming preschooler. <coughs> we went through some options locally, and she said, where I really would like him to go is Rise, but I'm not putting him on the wait list. So that 20 doesn't include the parents, like the one that I met, who won't go down the road and wait list. So there's more than 20. There's, there's clearly, and, and to your point of Mr. Halsey about revenue, those are parents who would like to write us a check every year to support our schools, and we can't help them. So I think that definitely qualifies. So can we only do one item at a time? Or can we take like the list? Go for it. So um, I think. Reading High, we we're turning kids away from the Project Equal programs, which are the um, engineering, science, uh, math, engineering. We don't, we don't have the resources to be able to have that programming, so that's a gap. We're, we're turning yeah. students away. Um, I think at schools where yeah. we have a space problem where we're not compliant with the special education space uh, based on the coordinated program review, so we have a space gap for our special education spaces. Um, I think it, I, Did you say elementary specifically or broader? Um, it's it's, it's, it's K-12. K-12. Okay. So it's this um, special education space, K-12, um, compliant with the coordinated uh, program review. Um, I, I would say in general, a space for our clubs, our academic clubs, um, I guess some, I think our athletic um, programs have Space, although there's probably some challenges there managing that. But um, I think at the high school, it's the academic clubs, many of the clubs don't have a, a space where they can actually be, so it causes them to have to sort of tear everything down at the end of their, their time and you know put it in a closet if they can find a closet or the back of the classroom and take it out. And every time you do that, um, you know, it costs time on, on that the kids could be engaging in improving the project or learning. Um, I think <coughs> the full day uh, kindergarten, we're turning families away from full day K. And I know, I know we, we had to cut some programming in the middle school in order to meet the budget this year, some of the health programming. But, um, so we, we basically um, you know, have a gap there um, in terms of some programming around health and wellness at the middle school. That's not for now. Oh, one thing I met me that I about at town meeting uh, that the Early Childhood Education Center was in part seeking to meet was um, art and music classroom space. So. Thank you.
reconsumed that space. <laughs> Um, senior, you know, senior housing, transportation, and um, affordable workforce housing, which we're working on, but we're not we're keeping up with it. <laughs> in general is an area that needs more attention um, not the least <coughs> which is the fact that a lot more of us in the room are going to be uh, requiring services here so yeah. <laughs> but they need to care for the people that are living here yeah it's the same for the teachers and well it's the, the same for our young people that are returning from college, yeah, college right? yeah. if they're not in the basement <laughs> it's true uh -huh. I, mean, you know, uh, I mean my son was looking to move back to town and he's looking at a one-bedroom apartment and at 1800 bucks yeah. um, which you know I get I mean it's kind of when you stop to think about that Yes. One of our resources are our young people. We'd like to have them come back in and take jobs that right. aren't necessarily at the very top, um, but they get become part of their community again. Scenarios. The mother-in-law is living in the in-law apartment, and you're calling saying your staff, the staff can't get there, and she's stuck in traffic. <laughs> and I'm like, they're trying to get there. They're in traffic. So it's nice having everybody in town working. <laughs> <clears throat> Say parking, especially for people who work in town. Parking is oh, no. um, Having volunteered with publicity in town, it would be nice to have more signage space for the activities that are going on to get more visibility to those programs across the town. We don't, we don't allow billboards though, so. It's a billboard mic that we could use. Good. It seems like it's raining. Thank you, Bill. Can I ask you a question in the back? Where, where would you put veteran services on this now? Oh, needs being met, not being met. Uh, I couldn't say that. You'd have to ask Frankie. Fair enough. Uh, I only get to help them put out the markers and flags. Fair enough. And if anybody wants a volunteer next year, I'd be happy. <laughs> my, my legs are getting too tight. Yeah. Okay. Jean. Um, I think you alluded to this earlier, the communication. We are communicating out to the community, and signage is what we think of it, but I think it's in terms of are the needs being met, I yeah. think there's room for improvement in how mm -hmm. we are communicating out to the broader community. I know, I was trying to figure out the words put around that, but yeah. Right, technology is right. email, is it Facebook, maybe not, not right. Facebook, it's not so. 
I feel like the schools have some really great pumps in there as well. I think the town side is a cool location. She said that, and this may be a silly thought, but it often, I don't mean any disrespect, but it's to the uh, media, but uh, we've depended on traditional print newspapers to inform us what's going on at the school, maybe a menu, maybe an activity. And more and more, the rate of change in the schools, you just can't keep up in the uh, published media. You then play that against the cultural programs or anything else that's going on in a, in a week's time. The old school media don't have a way to present that to a world that's increasingly you know, using one of these. <coughs> and that's, a, I think, a relatively no-cost way there's a low-cost way to address that. Everyone's kind of got one of these, right? Let's find a way to, to leverage it. That's an, that's an unmet need again. That goes to awareness and use intensity, et cetera, get more people involved in this stuff. And I suggest how to use it is very important also. In other words, just blasting 500 emails from the town small, each day. Human factors and all yeah. that. Yep. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure. You know, small business incentive is the right way to say it, and, and I think it ties back to communication and Bob, your comment before on the quality of our our infrastructure and our capital, and the buildings in town. We've put a lot of time, effort, you know, in into the new downtown, and, and there are wonderful stores there. There are great places, but we need to make sure they stay and the right ones continue to come in. So I'm not sure it's, you know. If we wait until it's empty storefronts, if we wait till it gets too bad, it's too late. It, it, we always have to be above on that one. So. That might almost fall into the next category. That some stuff we're not no, really doing right now, right according to the yeah. yeah, I don't know enough about it. Maybe maybe it does make more That's sense in the point. next yeah. well, in amazing. the next category because I think we can always do more. But if we're clearly not doing enough, then I wouldn't argue with it in the next category. Why don't we use that as a segue? Sure. <laughs> one under not provided today but should be I, I, would, I would like to offer active economic development so we don't actively go out and try and develop our economy so. what else are we not doing but we should be. Yeah. Um, I mean, maybe the really good reason why we're not doing this, but I never understood why some towns in Massachusetts do rental subsidies and what <coughs> Reading doesn't. We do. We have chapter eight. We have section eight housing in Reading? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I deal with those folks. <laughs> what was it? What was it? Section we have eight section housing. eight housing in Reading, apparently. I didn't know that. In a voluntary. I've never seen it on the website. I didn't know. Right. Uh, can argue we don't have enough or don't have enough. Yeah. Okay. We certainly don't have enough rental units. To probably okay. still. Yeah. Can, can we roll that to? That to yeah. Affordable housing right. workforce. Yeah. What else? What else should we be doing that we're not? <clears throat> wow, that's pretty cool. Okay. <laughs> uh, trying to think of the right way to say it, but essentially improving where we are in the per pupil funding for the schools. You know, again, not to take away, I think we've all said before, the school delivers an unbelievable product given what they have to work with. But if they've shown they can do that well, I think they've shown they deserve more. Doesn't that require really a deep analysis of what that number really comes from? Because it's not as simple as. Oh, what is this brainstorming? Yeah, yeah I, I know. I, 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 am I allowed to brainstorm? <laughs> well, well, you were asking well, you this way. Why don't we, why don't we change the wording? I think that the, the comment, though, is is it per people funding per se, or is it kind of um, resources that help deliver other things? Yeah, I, I am in no way married to that metric of <laughs> per pupil spending. It's just the idea of throughout the entire course of last year, 
we heard suggestions and very valid suggestions of things the school committee wanted and could use, and we weren't able to fund them. I think the problem with that is that's not unique to the school committee. You could make that claim about every other group in the town side. They're all let's put them on the board then. So the, the service is not provided. This. That's what we're doing. Okay. Which is a which is a you know what I was trying to say was that what we're not doing is really understanding from an underlying standpoint how we're spending. We know we can we can plug a number into a per pupil or a per elder or per workforce. I mean we could we could come to some ratio and say that's what we're spending on this. But it's it's deeper than that. You know, I mean it's it's not as simple as a as having a you know a metric like that, um, there's a lot of pieces that feed into that, um, and and I think we don't understand that as well as we should, and therefore it's difficult to try to get to that. I mean, yeah. I mean, because I I sat through a lot of those too, and I do understand that there's a lot of things that there are great ideas that we should find a way to pay for, um, and if we get too hung up on a metric. Then, oh, yeah. we're, then we're going to disappear and say, you know, throw our hands up, we're just, you know, we're cheap. Yeah. So can we call it something about, um, again, not to be caught on the metric, but also not to be saying, well, you know, that's not really something there. Can we define it in a way that says, for now, it's, it's per pupil funding, but kind of um, understanding what's behind it. Not, not what's behind it in terms of what makes it up and what are the elements, but what, what, what are we not doing? Right. That, I, money, I think would. that would be better than doing a like a, a fraction, right? Yeah. This is a calculation. That's it's really where I would say. So, Paul, you, Paul, your suggestion was excellent, and thank you. But it, it is it is tough. We should be trying to put down concrete services. Yep. So uh, I I love the, that you're putting that up there. I, I might suggest that it's not really uh, following the rules of, of this particular one, and we should instead list services that we wish we were offering. I were. completely agree. Yep. Do not care about the formula for, for per pupil spending. Just trying to get How this started. So, <laughs> thank you very much. Sorry, Jim is next. And that's, it's a good segue. I have a set of services that I think our schools um, are not offering to actually belongs on the previous list, but I moved past it, so. Oh, I can walk I, right over here. Okay. <laughs> we are providing social and emotional supports for our students, but it's clearly an area where we need to do more. Um, last year, and I, I forget the numbers, but um, we were presented with a number of students in our district who have been hospitalized, not treatment, hospitalized for social and emotional problems. It's, it's horrifying and it's explosive. It was a huge increase over the previous year. We do have students in this community who are in crisis and they are in our schools. So that's an area where I think we, we clearly need to be doing more. Um, yeah. um, Okay, so we um, sort of talked about maybe this is RML, these are some really you can get it on the list. We, because um, I think some of it can come out of the, the building department. The real estate market is booming again. There's a lot of new construction going on there, big houses. We don't have solar incentives in town for builders, for homeowners. Um, we don't have any kind of education or any kind of programs in town that say we want builders building um, energy and green housing. So that we're not wasting the resources that we have. Well, there is an energy code. So we, yeah. What is the, the code. What is the name of that other one? Beyond stretch. the stretch. Stretch. Thank you. So last time we checked, we have not used it. We're not implementing it, right? So maybe that's a better way to say it. Thank yeah. you. I couldn't remember what it was called. And I didn't want to say leave. Maybe the whole green program, because I know that Peter Heckenblackner and I, I think, are the only two people in town who pay for green credits. We want to advertise them into it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I guess it's, and again, I may be opening up a can of worms here, but infrastructure plan. Like, I feel like we don't do a great job in town looking at what the infrastructure needs are, and that could be roads, that could be buildings, and putting it all on a list and sort of prioritizing that. I feel like it's a knee-jerk reaction to whatever the town need is at that time, and then we may find a way to fund it, we may not, but I feel like there's not a lot of sort of structured planning around what the town needs and we're kind of putting that on a, on a timeline. Yes. 
Okay. okay, I'm really unhappy that Paul's thing didn't get up there. But before I try to rework what Paul, I thought, was putting forward, I think it points out what John commented, points out that we need to do, maybe Blum's on a different list, a much better job communicating the details of our budgets, whether it's the town budget or the school budget. We have budgets that have an enormous amount of detail, thought, and transparency. And so we need to do better communicating those budgets. So I don't know. Is that worth it? We have a point. Effective communication of the community is, is the budget part of that worth a separate I, point? I just asked. May, well, I think put it next to it, dash, I don't know, the little arrow, budget communication. Uh, it's, you know, it's, I think, in, obviously, you know, it's what we do at town meeting. We vote on the budget. And we've all been in town meeting where we've seen us all spend hours and hours and hours over something that costs thirty thousand or four hundred and fifty dollars, and then just approve the millions. The boom, boom. So I think um, what we need to do around what um, Paul was saying is because this is the category of services not provided today, but should be. So I think we need to improve, improve from the school committee from that perspective, improve our ability to fund the budgets as requested by the departments or the school committees. We have, everyone in here is on, you know, part, part of a piece of this budget. We all do a really good job trying to create those budgets and come up with as tight a budget as we can for the services that we believe we need to provide. But we don't do a good job. We need to then improve our ability to fund those budget requests instead of, instead of having them um, denied and take things off. So, if you don't want to put the improve the the per pupil want, gap, then what do you want to call it? Uh, Wait, what? what who's got last year's budget? Let's. <laughs> I don't have the budget docket in front of me, and I wasn't on the school committee. I want us to fund the things, the innovative pieces of our budgets. Then, if that's what, in the school budget. You know, maybe the programs that we had to let go were somewhere innovative, some were those student social services. We're not funding to get to 2020. And 13 years ago, we, um, you know, when we, we had the override, we were at a point where we had structure, we had done so much damage that we had sort of structurally caused damage to the budget. None of us want to be there again. But unless we're going to fund to be forward thinking, so I, I actually thought Paul should have stayed up there. It's brainstorming. It should have been there. But I, I, did you have the budget? The last Not with year's me, budget? No. I have it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I suggest rather than, than the detail of that point, I think you actually hit square on, which is um, make sure that we're, we're funding toward 2020, that it's a planning process toward 2020. What are the needs are for there, and what are we doing now that gets us toward it so that we don't wake up in 2020 and say, whoops. I think this probably falls into the category of provided today, but needs not entirely met. And that would be um, encouraging and celebrating diversity. And I think there, that goes to a lot of the other pieces we've talked about today, like building um, cultural and educational services, providing for housing that is affordable, and creating business incentives, creating business incentives to bringing kind of a diverse set of businesses to town. Um, proactive planning and support for our technology. And I think that's on both school and town sites that we haven't been able to invest like we should in proactively figuring out how to use technology and support it. Probably proactive lasts 10 minutes. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's a very quick window. <laughs> Continuous and proactive. Linda. left out and charging for free, charging for full day kindergarten means that some children who could really use that can't afford to. Um, and also, I'm sorry, I'm gonna pull you over to the list <laughs> because the conversation is um, a catalyst for more thoughts. So proactive, I know that um, Jean mentioned the social services, but I'd like to even get more specific proactive strategies to lessen 
youth anxiety. We do a lot with our wellness programs and behavioral health, but we can't afford to do everything we need to do. Also, instructional and technology, more instructional and technology specialists, because the teachers are responsible for learning a lot of new curriculum and new strategies for teaching that. And I believe that I'm thinking back to the last budget of what wasn't funded on that one. And one more, don't leave. <laughs> <laughs> um, and someone else in the field might be able to correct me on this, but more cross-generational activities. Mm. So that there are more activities with seniors and youth involved. And I believe that they are hap I know they are happening. But I think that's something that we could do more of with me. in them, but I'd ask that we be respectful. <laughs> so the issue now is to understand where um, we're overfunding things, either because the people feel they shouldn't be on a priority list or because we, they feel that we're not effectively, we're, we're spending more than we should be to, to do something. And I know these are really hard, and, and the reason why this list went from three to four to five was because trying to figure out what's, what's a way to really get at the core of where there's a rub, where people would like to have a discussion about certain priorities. Because otherwise, if we start with, I'll give you one second, Bob. So we started with a list of you know, the services that we're doing a good job on, and you know, arguably it's every activity in town today, almost. So this is kind of, Again, to bring up for discussion areas where we think we need to take uh, a deeper look. Go ahead, Bob. Um, I'll start with veteran services. The state funds 75 percent. I think they should fund 100 percent. Great. Great for our legislators. Category services, but I think when we go into some of our projects, we tend to spend money, uh, in my opinion, unnecessarily. Uh, case in point $75,000 for decorative tram, uh, street lights, uh, excuse me, traffic signals on West Street. What did they bring you? Uh, and the reason I say that, quite frankly, I was outside of Town Hall the other day, as I often am. And there's two gentlemen painting the black fancy tr uh, lights that we just put up 10 years ago. I've never seen anybody have to paint the aluminum ones. They may not look lovely. They may not uh, be what we quaintly want. But they function, and we don't have to maintain them. Uh, another one and it's going into the one below it. Um, we're spending $10,000 a year to water a decorative uh, uh, plants that we hang in downtown. What's the rate of return? <laughs> what is the rate of return on the investment? 100%. When you guys stop talking on these things, Mark, I think you have to look at the finished product, go back and look at what we've done and what we have not done well. We built a police station. Lovely looking building. But we took away parking space downtown and now we're complaining we don't have enough parking. And we can be put up at, uh, by the high school. It's wonderful, probably wouldn't have to spend as much money for uh, a building. Everything that we've done in this town, we uh, had folk in the police station talking to custodians. There's nine different types of light bulbs. I mean, that's, that's the stuff that eats up your money. So it, kind of detail planning is what this sounds a lot yeah. like also. Yeah, and, and, and stop on some of these architects that love to make money by putting in stuff that doesn't work. Okay. Thank you. Helene. I don't know if 
if this is an opportunity or not, but um, for like police and fire training, is there opportunities along the lines of what Bob was saying with the veteran services, opportunities to um, get, I don't know, state or federal funding for training, and maybe it, it is already funded, um, but I'm just looking for, you know, where, if there's other yeah, opportunities. You guys answer, and the answer is we could always use more grant funding. We have a lot of grants to do uh, training in the fire department. Yeah, you know, a couple of years ago, we did uh, pretty comprehensive training. Uh, and we also get support from the, uh, from the state through the Department of Fire Services. They come out a few times uh, a year to us and deliver training. It's, we would like to see it uh, considerably enhanced. Right, right. So to get more of those services from the state or federal level, if it's possible. Correct. And I, I have a plan to the town manager to enhance the training in the fire department as, as well. It was costly. So maybe could we add to the not enough list the notion of uh, matching uh, large expenditure opportunities to the potential of finding more grants? should come up for discussion, folks. Then. Sorry, I'm going to send up to a different list again. I was just <laughs> realizing that a program we used to fund but we can't anymore is RAD. Oh, and I really think that that's important. And yeah. That's uh, three, right? That's uh, three. three. We're, not, we're not providing any funding. Yeah, today, so not today, but should be. Right. Right. It's, it's three. three. three, three. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Policing is not a program, it's a philosophy. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there are some programs associated with community policing, but it's, it's a general philosophy. So I, yeah. I think that if you're talking about the program, it would be not being provided today, it should be. But the philosophy is still strong. So funding for it is funding is the issue. That would be a discussion with our legislators next time they have. And you're always willing to put up the night. I'm sorry? You're always willing to put up in the night. Hey, listen, we've got rooms here, but if we can just take down some people. Yeah. Combinations of one. Hotel California. Like the Hotel California. You can check it, but you can just let it see. I'd like to think about combining two and four, and it's really for the behavioral health in the schools, and I'd like us to look at perhaps vendoring that out and looking at some of the other cities like Beverly. They actually vendor their behavioral health out to Center for Family Development. They basically, it's win-win. They bill for insurance. Um, so you're not actually having that part of your school budget. And the advantage is they're all licensed clinicians. Um, and they, it's win-win. I'd like us to kind of look at what can we vendor out for some of our services and increase them at the same time. Should we look at this list as opportunities for outsourcing as well? I was just thinking that's not oh, a label for that. That's in general. Yeah. Um, some of the social services we provide possibly could be outsourced. It could very well fall is that under that. Under that? Okay. Jackie, did I see your hand? Yes. <laughs> I was just going to um, bring up the fact that a lot of social services, human services, we could actually maximize our resources by collaborating. Yeah. And I was also going to bring the fact in by emergency services that there's not going to be a number of opportunities for us to actually bring in revenues by working together and, um, and behavioral health is going to be a big concern also with um, more seniors that are being going to be living in the community and that would once been institutionalized but will not be institutionalized and that will play a part in our emergency and our, um, personnel and that's one of the things too that we know that other resources that we can maximize on and actually
actually will play into the big community part, whether we, you know, collaboratively work together and our human services and things like that. So there will be revenue opportunities there for um, to work on billing, third party billing situations and having us all work together. So whether it's not a resource we have, but it'll be also something that we can work together in the community to develop resources for the infrastructure that's about to, that is, a, it's here, but it will be growing. I guess crosses all those. <laughs> and, and I'm not sure where to put this here, but if we do this collaborative work like what you mentioned, then there would need to be space available to do the counseling in at the schools. And right now we're maxed out on space. So um, I would put that on the list, I guess. Um, we have space generally and the services provided have not met space yeah, kind yeah. of broad concept. I'll purposely be careful with this one. It might not be popular, <laughs> but if we think of the library moving forward, and let me get a little further before anyone jumps, but the focus is going to be towards the library of the future. There's a finite pool, so as we shift towards that, the more traditional there are some pieces of the library that need to be left behind not completely but i'm trying to highlight a shift in funding we've committed to a major project which i support i don't take this the wrong way but if we're going to move in a direction mm -hmm. not everything should come along and yeah i hear you you're aiming at a moving target and you gotta aim for where you're gonna be not where this you're is the time right and this is the time to plan for it because we heard how important the IT side of it and the infrastructure and here's where we're going to change so don't keep everything we used to have and add to it we got to move it in the right direction actually Paul if I could generalize that and I don't have anything in particular but it's my, been my experience and it's true in the uh, business environment it's so much easier to add yeah. than it is to delete because mm -hmm. there's so many beneficiaries the of the ongoing activities and there's so many uh, folks that would like to see those things continue. Yeah. And in general, having a healthy view towards what do you prune and where do you kind of res restrict the money and see who screams and what adjustments you need to make, that's not limited to the library. For yeah, absolutely. You, you mentioned no, yeah. prioritization. Yeah. Right? Right. 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 We have the opportunity right in front of us in the library. Might be a little bit easier, but absolutely. Great point. I'm not sure you put that in meeting speed. Yeah. For the pruning pause. <laughs> 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 Works for me. <laughs> And then I put shift in library program. Mm -hmm. yeah. For category four, I don't have a specific area, but uh, look generally for areas where you can engage in private public partnerships. That's a great one. Um, and then, in terms going back to two, these are things that were mentioned tonight, but I just wanted to make sure we wrote them down in the brainstorming session as well. And those would be. Um, long-term planning for OPEB liabilities and website development. What was the first one? Um, OPEB liability planning. Oh, okay. Pretty well covered, guys. Anybody else? Oh, oh sorry. Is there more questions? <laughs> Sorry, somebody said over here I have one more. The biggest waste of money from a long term perspective is plowing snow. It'll come. So you suggest a question. I'll tell you one thing that stands out is very few other towns. Because we plow the downtown, they completely clean the downtown business area. You find another community that does that without the businesses paying for it. And we used to plow all the churches and we cut that out a few years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's controversial because Town Hall parking lot is, you know, one of those church. two churches. Uh, but in general, we provide extra services that many communities don't. And that one to me really stands out. Almost. 
Is that is that number five though? Um, Services well, something... provided today that should not be funded well, at all. I don't know, too much funding. Did we did we make four and five kind of the same? I think they come together. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's specifically so, snow plowing the downtown, downtown, downtown like businesses, the sidewalks. Or... Well, you know the selectmen uh, did a parallel with a few years ago discussed having uh, homeowners have to do shovel. Uh huh. Similar philosophy. You know, why does the town have to dig out every sidewalk in town? And they were met with absolutely, we will dig out every town side of the sidewalk. Well, you will prioritize what you and dig out. Prioritize. Now put it on the backs of the homeowners. So, as a town, we do quite a lot of snow removal. Um, not every city in town does that. It's a value statement. Yeah. It's a choice. It's HTC. So, you This is sort of a general following up on what Mr. Arena and Ms. Perkins were saying about printing philosophies. I just want to, um, when I was looking at number four and five and what should we not be providing, I just think a general shift towards data, really thinking thoughtfully about metrics for all of our programs. I think using data and saying, what was this program designed to accomplish, hard data, then it becomes easier to make these decisions because that program yeah. was designed to reduce X by this percent in five years. It did or it didn't. And if it didn't, it needs to be pruned. And that becomes a much less emotional discussion if, if you start. So that's a general philosophy shift. Every program is very solid with good intentions, but we very seldom measure where mm -hmm. those intentions and where we're going to For the town side, I'll, I'll put that under if we don't do it. We do some of it, but I don't really think we do enough. And actually, a couple members of the staff today went to a conference on this very thing in Boston, mm -hmm. and it relates to that 2020 issue of measuring good. how well you do. So it's not just measuring a new thing in order to do what people you want. It's measuring all the things that you do constantly to see how well you're doing it and how neat it is. And that goes back to that Ed Center uh, report about, hey, you do a great job. It doesn't matter. Nobody cares. So review and that. Nice job. Right. Uh, measure, I guess, broadly. Yeah. Just out of curiosity, was, was this part um, making it easy to measure too? Because you can imagine that's constant measuring is going to take constant time. You've got to measure. That's, a, that's an excellent point. Um, and that's one of the reasons we haven't got more deeply into it for the town side. Um, a few years ago, the program, I think it's generally called 311, um, Baltimore started it. Some of them does a really nice job. And we wanted to do it. And what it is, is a very quantitatively driven way to drive the organization and to provide services to residents of all sorts. Um, in order to do that, we would have to hire two, two and four employees in town hall. So we would just stop doing that. So, uh, I actually had a process question. I'm looking at the great ideas that are being shared now and realizing that there are others who couldn't make this meeting that are watching on TV and wondering if these will be typed up, put online. We're talking about communication and let the viewers and other citizens contribute to these things, the categories, as they see it and maybe cast their votes. I'm wondering if there's a way for that to be done. That would give more people a voice. I think there are actually two points in there. One is I'm going to point to the kind of the 2010 uh, activity. So we did um, get it down on paper and share it literally at the next meeting. So that's piece one. I think that absolutely has to happen. Piece two is, is there a way that we can, um, beyond just the people who can physically make it, see if there's a way that we can collect that data? That's actually kind of next on my agenda is to talk more about communication. But yeah, that's a good point. It's a real good point. Tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> proof. <laughs> And I'll wait to go on top of that since we're going into the next. Well, so if, if we covered most of the main points, here's what I'd like to suggest. Um, categories two, three, and four are really areas where we talked about um, some things. We got kind of more discussion going. Category one is fairly broad. We talked about a lot of good things, and, and I'm not sure that any of us in the room could say, okay, you can only pick a few of these. Which would they be? I'm not sure that that's fair on number one. Um, on two, three, and four, however, I think it's very fair. Um, so here's what I'd like to suggest. We have some different colored stickers um, that we'll, we'll figure out what to do. Maybe we, we say um, five. Let, let, me, let me throw this out for discussion. Here's what I'd like to suggest. Let's see if this works. For each category, each person for category number two, there are five things that you can basically put a sticker on, meaning that for you it's a priority. Either it, it has to continue or it has to be discussed, whatever, it's a priority. 
The same thing for category three, the same thing for category four. So each person is getting five votes in the category. The purpose of this is to just get a sense of where do people see the highest priorities on each of those lists. John. Uh, just a process point. If five may, may not prioritize it quickly enough. You want to go to three? Three is probably the minimum. Yeah, was, that's where I started, as you can see on the piece of paper. <laughs> Does three work, folks? <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> Are we having a process problem with the stickers? Are we having a communication problem with the packaging? Okay, so Scouts Honor, everybody, okay? Three votes, categories two, three, and four. So if you can, you're going to put um, a sticker in three different spots on each one. Yeah, that's fine. Let me just do it. Just put, so well, is your guidance people get three of each color or nine of each color? No, three, three. Of any color, right? three of any one color. Yeah, we're not going to prioritize one, two, three. It's, it's, it's priority or it's not. So each person, three votes in number two, three votes in number three, three votes in number four. And the honor system, not possible. Well, on two, on two, no. On three and four, yes. Uh, on, on four, yes. Okay, do we dare let this Okay. Let's see. Let's see if we can do this in like five minutes. After you. So hard. So does everybody have one? That's <laughs>
There'll be some that we can kind of group together. I think we should yeah. like one thing got the gold. Okay, guys, let's gather around again, please. Okay. Okay, let's come back. Bob's got a comment, folks. Was that the current? Was that uh, 
It wasn't Merrill Lynch. What was the group said when? Oh, E.F. Hutton. E.F. Hutton. Hutton speaks. I wanted to make one comment that uh, Dr. Dory brought up a little late in the process, and, and both of us should have thought of earlier. We hastily added it to the list and voted as many times individually as we could. But only up to three, right? Uh, I'm not saying. <laughs> Look at the different color dots. Um, one of the issues we both face with, uh, I'd say to a somewhat modest degree now, but to an ever-increasing and concerning degree, is retaining staff. Um, and if you want to be more specific, retaining top staff. Um, you know, I'll, I'll just kind of leave it at that and say that that's a pretty serious issue because Anyone who, who knows who's in business, the cost of turnover is much more than the cost of retaining staff. But the way our budget process works and the way our compensation works, we end up having turnover. Thank you. Here's what I'd like, like to suggest from here. Rather than trying to summarize this, which would, is going to take a little bit of work, FinCom will, will summarize it and pull it together. And um, in, on that sign-in sheet, do we have emails there as well by any chance? We didn't, but we know most of Okay. All right. So that we can um, circulate the information that, that's come from here. There may be some categories, as we looked up here, that probably can get pulled together. For example, senior housing, senior transportation, elder services, things like that may make sense to bring together. I apologize for the clarification. Uh, did people assume full day K on this list was free full day K, which would make it the same as that free full day K? Or did people who put a dot next to this full day K? We're speaking more to a space issue and less to a funding issue. I, I'm just curious. So people who voted for full day K on the services um, needed or taxpayer not provided K on yeah. the other one. Taxpayer <coughs> provided K. Uh, that says not that, free. That one says. <laughs> <that's>, <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I apologize yeah, for right. stretching this out any longer. Than me. And there are a lot of. <laughs> Same, okay. uh, are they? Because I okay. exactly. are they? Well, we. Um, I think this was this one was over here as more of the, a space issue, but not being able to meet the needs of the community, and yeah. that was taking it that additional step. So should we clarify it on the uh, That's how I. That's how I voted. So yeah. as long as no one else wants to change their dot, uh, then it's fine. I have a question for the schools. Anyway. If you offer all day kindergarten, doesn't it have to be free? Or is that only if you choose to get reimbursed by the state? Is there a choice there, in other words? No. He, no. Well, no. If you offer it for if you offer it for everyone, it is. It has to be free and because then you, then you get you get the chapter seventy funding that way. So there's no way to offer a free all-day kindergarten and somehow yeah. pay for it ourselves, absent uh, fed, uh, state money. To, to clarify, I wasn't clear to on clarify, what the free all-day K point was. I said. I apologize. Are you asking the following question, Bob? If we were to offer full day paid kindergarten, is that a possibility? I think that's your question. No, my question was for the second point, which was free all day kindergarten, isn't all day kindergarten the same thing? Yes. For everyone. If we were to only yes. offer all day kindergarten, then yes. And I guess I at least took the first point to be all day kindergarten for everyone, and the second one to me was redundant. <coughs> I'm, I'm not, I'm asking, not, oh. that's how I read it. I, I, I think I if it really know. was yeah, the okay. full day K as we currently have it, tuition, but we don't, but we don't have the capacity oh. even for the I tuition that the that students that want it. Chapter seven, but, uh, but that that was was so I would like to retract anything I said. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward to you guys in analyzing this. <laughs> Let us take a shot at it. Yeah. And I think it's a fair point to bring up at the next go. discussion. Yeah. Me and Paul, we've learned our lesson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me let me suggest then that since we'll um, collate the information, publish the information, and this is part of the, the homework assignment, which we're going to get to in a minute. Just be thinking of this as part of the homework. Um, one thing I want to get to before we get there, though, is we've talked a lot about it um, today. It's on the list in the Reading 2020 group. Um, it's highlighted as one of the key needs that we don't do very well already. And I know that that means it requires a lot more discussion, a lot more study. But between now and our next meeting, what can we do to get more communication going about what we've been talking about, get more people coming? I, I think 
the, the idea of literally bringing someone with you as an assignment is perhaps one of the best ways. But what other things are we not talking about that we should for communication? One thing that I think came up at FinCom last time was that um, perhaps community services may have something of an email list um, that might be a vehicle um, that we could short term use while we're talking about longer term solutions. Um, if that's a possibility, that might be an interesting approach. I just wanted to open it up for a few minutes to folks. What other ideas do we have? John? Are we directly inviting the volunteers of all the other standing committees and bodies? Um, we have emails on all of them. They all have a high vested of interest yep. in these discussions. So we have done some, I guess would be we have not done all. Does that sound right, Bob? Um, I'm not, this time I don't believe we used lists like that in the past. We have. Um, we have, just so you know, we have email lists, let's say 95% of volunteers we cover, and about 95% of town meeting, if, if those are different. Um, we try to use those judiciously. Uh, we didn't use it for tonight. We have used it in the past um, for a financial forum. Honestly, <laughs> I'm not sure there's a big difference. Um, the community services list is redundant to that, I'll say broadly, and it's about 4,000 addresses or email addresses. So that's the best single list that I know of. Short of using 911 or reverse 911. So, so I think two points. One is we should make sure we invite everybody that we know. Make sure we've used the list um, as best we can, and then consider using that list too, Jean. There's one other thing that um, you can do to get the word out, and that's put something in either an RML detail or a <coughs> water bill. That's yes. Okay, closest we're already paying for. Yeah, love it. Um, uh, who knows the press? How do we how do we make that happen? When the bills, the bills go up on a quarterly basis, we can have some of information in there. Um, How many uh, sheets? Yep. Two? Probably uh, one. How much capacity do you have? You can put, uh, you know, I mean, you know, through the mail, so you can put in like a brochure or a couple pages or something to go in. We I, do don't that think, I don't think we can do it in time for a September's meeting. But, yeah. but for the future, is great. So I think that works great for people who <coughs> are married to their snail mail. And it's not going to work well for a lot of the population who now no longer looks at mail, looks at hard copy. So I think we need to get something out there. It needs to be right on the website, which right now is our only way for people who go straight for technology to get something about it. It needs to be right on the front page so it's easy to see. Um. Other thoughts? How else can we? There'd be limitations to it, of course, and you have to think about the data that you get back to it. But ultimately, if we scrub this, which we're going to do, down to a, a sheet like this that we had before, you can take a basic form of it into, you know, one of the, the common onlines like a Survey Monkey or one of those, and say, hey, as long as we blast and advertise that, yes, people could if they wanted to hop on a million times and vote for the same things, but we'd get some level of feedback for a pretty short investment, right? You've only got the term. We're already talking about scrubbing this data anyway. So it's that one extra step of linking it to, you know, pretty common online survey. It collects its own data. We spit it out. Yeah, it's not perfect data, but it's, it's data to at least consider. John, were you volunteering to do that? <laughs> 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 well, <technology. laughs> Any other thoughts, uh, short term and long term? I think one of the things we should definitely do, though, is because we have the, the state legislators coming, um, this is a real opportunity for people in the town to, to come and, and you know, interact. It's a great opportunity for the legislators also to, to meet with a lot of townspeople. We need to figure out a way to, to get it publicized. All right, if everybody brings a bunch of people and we advertise this room, it's going to be a problem. Yeah, you need I was just thinking, you need a different space. Want to go to the high school, performing arts center? We have to ask for those. <laughs> <laughs> Rent is cheap. We'd love to have it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe yeah we'll check it, the dates. as long as the dates available. Yeah, so. let's, let's see. I, I think that's a, that's a, a great idea and then um, get a lot of, of, of word out. Linda. Um, 
two other ways to get the word out are Maureen Knight's Community Connection <coughs> website. And I just saw that there's a deadline coming up, but I don't know if do, we missed do you it. Got that list. That's I'm the Maureen Knight. Oh, you really are? Yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so I'm not Maureen Knight. I'm, I'm <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> And then, okay, I might be embarrassed, but the Chamber of Commerce also has a website to put word out, and I don't know if that person's here who's she's in charge not. of that. She's because not. I do email with them, but I don't yeah. see them face She's not face. here. Okay. I think the bottom line is, yeah, if each of us kind of uses the resources that we know of and invites a friend or two to come, that would be great. We'll explore if we can get the PAC Center, which I think is a, is a great idea. If it's available on that night, I think we should move the venue to there. Does that, that work for everybody? For the next meeting, and the reason is that if we're going to have the state legislators and we're going to draw as large a crowd as possible, we go for it. The gym would probably work tomorrow. We had a time. Yeah. Unlike yeah. it would come Yeah. Pack would be nicer, though. If we have it. Yeah. If it's not available. Okay. Um, okay. So, homework for next time. Okay. So, uh, FinCom homework, and we'll have to talk about that for a second, is we're going to collate all this information, publish it. Um, take a look at it. What we ask is you review it and see which areas um, you think are, are, are I guess we'll, we'll see from the votes which areas are the highest priorities. What we want to talk about at the next meeting is, okay, they're the high priorities. What are we going to do about it? What, what does that mean? What's the next step? We've identified them as important and so think about that. That's one. Two, bring a friend. Okay? Attach somebody with you or more than one. Again, we'll, we'll get a bigger venue. A new friend. <laughs> and, if, if it's tough, then any friend. But yeah. <laughs> um, th did, how did this work for folks? Was, it, was this an interesting process? Uh, at least you know this far in terms of getting some ideas out on the table. Because I think what I propose is, if it worked, we'd like to do next time to talk more about the uh, revenue side and revenue generation ideas. We touched on some of them, but the focus of the next one really is revenue generation ideas. Any, any comments, anything that we should think about changing or, or modifying to this? John? It's fine to talk about the inputs to the process, the revenues and the priorities. Uh, we're all operating in, in an environment of a fairly predictable revenue stream. And the, real, the, excess, the challenge we have, uh, short of fundamentally changing the inputs and outputs, is living within the three to four percent uh, year-over-year year growth in tax revenues <coughs> uh, to the degree any part of our organization is built outside that curve somebody else has to suffer or some other program has to get cut we can raise some but the average is always on that uh, curve none of this addresses that reality and we can <coughs> use some window we can make some adjustments around the, the edges we may even find some uh, opportunities here for the revenue. But the pruning and the reality that you're on this line and uh, you really can't deviate much over the year over year growth, I don't think that's baked into our thinking at the moment. Yeah. So uh, let me respond to that. I think for this step, purposefully, that's, that's what we did. Th this is not <coughs> asking questions about revenues, it's asking about where, where are the community's priorities, what's most important. Yeah, sure. The question is, what would you like to do that you're not doing now? It's not a, it's not a bound problem. It's an unbound problem. Mm -hmm. and so you get a profusion of ideas, some of which are practical, some of which are less practical. Yeah. But there may, be, there may be some that the town decides is above that 3 to 4% range, and it has to figure out how to fund it. And it can, there are options that range from discussions of, of operating overrides. Other, hopefully there are other options that come out of that revenue discussion. So it's a guided discovery tour to an override. Yes. Well, I mean, if that's what it is, okay. I mean, they you know, I mean, if that's what the if that's what the citizens want, <coughs> then we gotta be very clear that we get across the board input, yeah. so yeah. that we know that. And I'm not saying that's a bad idea or a good idea. I'm just saying, right. if if that if that's what ends up happening, that that's what this becomes, which it could then the input has got to come from more than <coughs> 35 people. Absolutely. I mean, it's just got to be. 100% agree. I, I, I think that, that the <clears throat> purpose of this process and the purpose of the discussion of how do we get more people involved is to hit right on that. Um, 
and frankly, there's the opposite side of things too, which is that let's say that, that you know, we have to live within you know, certain levels. There are certain services we can't sufficiently fund. I would hope that the public has a lot of input into that as well, saying, no, I don't agree with that. And then that becomes a function of the whole communication thing that we discussed. Right. So that right. And, and so, I mean, this is exactly why this process is starting. And, and it's also exactly why it's insufficient for just the people in this room to be involved. It'll be much broader. And, and I don't think any of us yet have the solution <laughs> to, how to how to do that, whether it's the communication or what we're going to do. But that's why we're talking about it, and that's why we're trying to get as many people involved as we can. I think probably the other thing we've got to do is both in online uh, journalism, in on TV, uh, in articles, um, we need to kind of publicize what's going on, what some of these outcomes were, what progress uh, is being made in the different groups. Uh, again, not, not taking shots, but a great example. I wanted to take a peek and say, what was the date that Standard & Poor's upgraded us to AAA? And the only thing I could find was the three other t three towns that decided they would advertise it. <laughs> Nothing about us. And, and again, it's great. It's fantastic that this happened. We haven't said a word about it. And you can't get it from Standard & Poor's without subscribing. So, <laughs> so anyway. Um, with that, any other comments? Any, anybody? I have a question. Sure. Um, we do have a town meeting coming up, and not that much in the future. Um, you can use that as an opportunity to engage town meeting in this discussion, if you wish. Um, along Paul's ideas, I can create a survey based on all this input and give people three choices and limit their amount of votes. And we could try out uh, asking town meeting members as a start. We could certainly Absolutely. open it to the community. Do the polling thing like uh, Not so much that way. Not at town meeting, but we could send it to town meeting members in advance, I would assume. And then you could stand up under reports and just do five minutes. That's a great so that's, idea. One, that's just an unusual opportunity within a budget cycle to have a town meeting pulled yeah. together. That's fantastic. I think to get more town meeting members involved in this process would be wonderful also. And again, and most we, of us, many of us here are. If before the September financial forum, that would help engage them at maybe to come. Yep. Super. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? Yes, thank, you. Oh. thank you guys all for coming. Really thank you for coming. Thanks. We have other we have other business guys for a couple minutes. Yes. Yes. Okay, let's go to page. <laughs> you want to? Do you guys want to hold this until? Okay. So we're we're not gonna we're gonna uh, vote on them at the August meeting instead of time. Any other stuff that we should? Have? So August meeting, um, we're gonna need to vote on warrant articles. <laughs> That's our chance to do it. So, is August 20th? Is that legal? The vacation window? What is the date? I think it's the 20th. Isn't I'm not. It? You're not here. Okay. Um, where's here? It is here. It is August 20th. Yeah. Wednesday? Sound all right? Okay. We just need to make sure we got five plus because we've got to vote on those, on those articles. Okay. Great. Good job, Mark. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Good. Uh, motion to adjourn from somebody, please. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor? Opposed? We are adjourned. <laughs>